each day new stories about innocent Christians in Iran and Syria and Egypt and Pakistan, Sudan, sentenced to death for converting to or practicing Christianity. Many nations that once had robust Christian communities making up more than 25% of their population now have less than 10%. Some of these communities will even die out as Christians make a mass migration. But the only country in the region, the only place in the Middle East where Christians have actually prospered in the last decade and their population has grown is Israel. Yes, the Jewish state has been the safest place for Christians to live and prosper. And Hadassah Hospital follows in the same tradition demonstrating to the world that where there's hunger, where there's sickness, there's no divide, no religion, no politics. And since the beginning of the Syrian war, where more than 300,000 Syrians have been brutally butchered in the streets of Syria and their government watches, Israelis are transporting them to Hadassah Hospital to be treated. Yes, defense is defense and war is war, but human life is always sacred. Did you know that the only Arab bone marrow registry in the entire world is housed at Hadassah Hospital? That means an insurance policy on any Arab who needs a bone marrow transplant is at Hadassah Hospital. Something to be very proud of. Did you also know that at this very moment, there are about 60 Palestinian doctors that are completing their residency training at Hadassah? That means if a Palestinian medical student is accepted to the Hadassah residency program, then Israel helps this doctor become licensed to work in the state of Israel. And better than that, they get security clearance to enter Jerusalem on a regular basis. Security clearance to enter Israel means compromising the security of Israel's citizens. Over the summer, I closely covered the tragic conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza in Operation Protective Edge. I interviewed Palestinians in Gaza who told me Israel is not the enemy, Hamas is. Yes, they voted Hamas into power, but many Palestinians say they felt they had no choice. It was an honest moment and an opportunity to expose Hamas from the mouths of the Palestinians themselves. At that time, I interviewed a young man named Mohammed, who's 32 years old. In our first phone call, he was very nervous, and I later found out it was because he was pacing the hospital hallways because his daughter was taken in for smoke inhalation from a rocket that had landed near their home. But Mohammed took the time to speak to me, to express his extreme anger against Hamas, not against Israel for the rocket, but against Hamas for putting these citizens, the Palestinian people who they are supposed to protect, putting them in harm's way. So a few days ago, knowing that I would be speaking here today, I called Mohammed in Gaza. And I said, Mohammed, what should I tell the supporters of Hadassah? And Mohammed said, many Gazans, like my daughter, have been treated at Hadassah, and all of us speak so fondly of the hospital. He also said, while Jews at Hadassah have saved many of our lives, Hamas kills us and has killed patients who were treated at Hadassah after they returned. Let me just clarify what he said. It's shocking. That means the Palestinians from Gaza would go to Hadassah, be treated by most likely an Israeli and Jewish doctor, and then come back home and be killed by their own, by Hamas, because they were either speaking out against Hamas or because they were treated at an Israeli hospital where information might have been shared. And maybe your children are not on the front lines fighting for Israel, but every time there's news about Syrians or Palestinians being treated at Hadassah, that is your important contribution in helping Israel bridge the divide. By supporting Hadassah, it's not just a physical building, a hospital, machinery, or doctors. It's also a political statement and a human one. You're helping to show that the support of, supporters of Israel in every corner of the world 
will always hold humanity above hate. The American novelist Edith Wharton wrote, there are two ways of spreading light. You can be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. But my final thought to you is that all the terrorist groups can try to cover the world with darkness and as the people of Israel and her friends continue in their ways, caring, nurturing, filling hungry stomachs and serving as a haven for the Christian persecuted, treating the wounded and rescuing the ill, no darkness, no darkness can ever dim the light unto the nations. Thank you.